Next unit we're covering is Unit 12, Wounds and Bleeding. So different types of wounds, you've got an incised or clean cut, a laceration or a rough tear, an abrasion where the top layers of skin have been scraped. You've got a contusion or a blood blow, a puncture, which is a small entry, or a velocity, uh, which is a puncture wound at velocity into or through the body. Types of bleeding, you've got arterial bleeding, where right, sorry, bright red oxygenated blood spurts from the wound in time of the heartbeat. Uh, this is the most serious of the bleeding because you can bleed out in quite a short period of time. Uh, then you've got venous bleeding, comes from the veins rather than arteries. This is dark red blood and this will gush from the wound or pool at the site of the wound. And capillary bleeding, oozing occurs at the site. How do you prevent cross-infection? Wear disposable gloves. Where possible, wash hands before dressing a wound. Cover cuts and grazes on your hand. Avoid touching the wound. Try not to talk, sneeze or cough over the wound. Place all soil dressings and materials, including gloves and a suitably marked, usually yellow, plastic bag for incineration. Contaminated first aid materials and shafts, for example needles, syringes, should be disposed of and incinerated uh, in line with local protocols. How should you treat bleeding? Wear gloves. Check wound for embedded objects. Use sterile dressing. Elevate and support injured limbs. If further bleeding occurs, apply a second dressing on top of the first. If blood seeps through, remove both dressings and apply a new dressing, making sure the pressure is applied accurately at the point of bleeding. Wounds with embedded foreign object. It's very important not to remove the foreign object as it could be a sealing, an artery or a vein inside the wound. You remove it and you could start um, an arterial bleed. So wounds with embedded objects, apply dressings and pressure to either side of the object. Apply a larger dressing. Ask the casualty to assist if available. Secure the bandage and treat for shock. So lie them down um, in, in waiting, uh, sorry, whilst waiting for the medical services. Now bleeding from different orifices. Uh, let's just go through this, uh, the site, the appearance and the cause. So bleeding from the mouth. If it's bright red, frothy, coughed of blood, could be vomited blood, red or dark reddish brown, almost like coffee grounds. And the cause would be bleeding in the lungs or bleeding in the stomach. If you've got uh, bleeding from the ear, could be fresh bright red blood or thin watery blood. And the cause could either be injury to the ear, perforated eardrum, or it could be a head injury. Bleeding from nose, Fresh, bright red blood or thin watery blood. Again, could be ruptured blood vessel in nostril or skull fracture. Bleeding from the anus. Uh, if it's fresh, bright and red blood or black tarry, offensive smell in stool. Could either be injury to the anus or lower bowel or injury to the upper bowel. And the urethra. The urine with red or smoky appearance and occasional clots. This could be bleeding from the bladder or kidneys. And with a vagina, either fresh or dark blood. This could be due to menstruation, miscarriage, disease or injury to the vagina or womb. Steph. I call my arm in a machine. Hold it high in the air. I will get a first aid. Hi there, Steph. How are you? Can we have a quick look in there if I can? 
nothing in it at all, fantastic. What I want you to do now, put your left hand on top of it and press down hard, lovely. Try and raise it a little bit. Does it hurt anywhere else? No. What we're going to do now is put you on the floor flat, okay? Okay. Hope you come then. Are you okay there? That's lovely, keep it up there. John, can you go and get something to put under her legs and a blanket, please? Okay then, Steph. How are you feeling? Fine. Not feeling dizzy? Sick? No. That's lovely. Soon have you sorted out here. You're going to be great here, Steph. Doing well. John, could you put her legs up on the box for us, please? Thank you. This should help you out a little bit now, Steph. That's brilliant. If you can just drape the blanket over her as well, we'll just try and keep her a little bit warm. Okay there? John, I now need you to go and ring 999 and get the emergency services to us. Tell them that we've got a young lady with a bad laceration, bleeding heavily. She may be going into shock. You'll need to give them the location and a contact number. When you've done that, get back here and tell me, are you happy with that? Excessive loss of blood can be life-threatening, so raising a casualty's legs can help with the flow of blood to major organs. Laying the casualty on the floor treats the casualty with a condition of shock. A sterile dressing of an appropriate size must be applied to the wound. Just hold on to that one as well, will you, for me? That's great, thank you. Okay. Continual communication okay. with the casualty, checking how they feel, will help to keep them calm. Tell me if you're feeling sick at all. That's fantastic. The arm should be placed in a raised position above the heart to help reduce bleeding. But if blood does seep through the dressing, another needs to be applied on top of the first. Once the paramedics have taken over and you've had a chance to draw breath, it's a legal requirement to record details in the accident book. It's also essential to replenish the first aid kit. Replace any dressings that have been used and check the expiry dates on those that remain. Remember, no lotions, potions or medicines should be kept in the first aid box as they can only be prescribed by qualified physicians. A carefully maintained box will ensure that you have the best chance of providing the best first aid in any situation. If dark red blood was vomited, the casualty may have an injury to their A, stomach, B, lungs, C, head, or D, lower bowel. So again, you can uh, pause the video. If dark red blood was vomited, Casualty may have an injury to the what? Stomach, lungs, lower bowel, bowel, head. And for this. To the stomach. A crush injury should not be released after A, 5 minutes, B, 10 minutes, C, 15 minutes, or D, 20 minutes. No, we haven't covered this item yet, but um, you shouldn't release somebody after what? Fifteen minutes for crush injury. If bleeding seeps through the initial dressing applied to an injured limb, you should A remove it and replace it with a bigger dressing, B, leave it and wait for it to stop, C, apply a tourniquet to the injured limb, or D, apply a second dressing directly on top. So which one do you think it is? A, B, C or D? Just remember the video you just watched, and what did the first aider do with the girl who had the injury? E. the second dressing on top. If your casualty is conscious and has suffered a deep incision to the forehead, they should ideally be placed in what position? A. In the recovery position. B. Laid down with legs raised. C. Laid down with legs and head raised. Or D. Laid on their side, injured side down. So again, this you think is the right answer? A, B, C or D? Uh, here's a clue. They could be going into shock. So what position would you put them in for the shock position? Lay 
again. Oh no, it's wrong. No, sorry, that's not right. If your casualty is conscious and has suffered a deep incision to the forehead, lay them down with legs and head raised. So, I'll only accept C as the correct answer. In what position would you place a conscious casualty suffering from a penetrating wound to the chest? A. Laying down with legs elevated. B. Half sitting inclined towards injured side with head and shoulders raised. C. Half sitting inclined away from injured side with head and shoulders raised. Or D. Sitting up with support under knees.